Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Google Fonts to add your own custom fonts to your websites. Now don't worry, this is all very easy and it's definitely going to be worth it. By using these fonts, it's going to make your websites look and feel a lot more professional. Okay, so before getting into it, I just want to show you the current state of my website. Okay, so right here, as we can see, I've got this simple uh, heading as well as some body text. And inside the HTML, we can see it looks something like this. As we can see, we've got this H1 as well as this paragraph tag. So, how do we include custom fonts on this page using Google Fonts? Well, the first step uh, is going to be to head over to the Google Fonts website right here and I'll leave a link to this below and as we can see we've got many different fonts to choose from. We can also filter by category, language, font properties etc as well as enter in our own custom preview text for example if I type in decode we of course can see how that looks in each one of these fonts. So. What are the best fonts to use when it comes to your web pages? Well, uh, probably the most important thing to look out for is going to be to pick between a serif and sans serif font for your main body text. Okay, so for example, I like to go with sans serif. So I'm going to filter by sans serif right here. And as we can see, we've got all of these fonts to choose from. So of course, once you have chosen your desired font, for example, if I choose uh, something like uh, uh, Source Sans Pro, we can see here we have many different font styles to choose from. Now, keep in mind that some fonts are only going to have a couple of styles right here. Some of them might even have more than this, but uh, the general idea is you want to try and get a font or pick a font family uh, that has many different styles for you to choose from. That way, you can have many different types of uh, you know text on your page from thin up until bold and whatever you want. Okay. Now, this is very important. So as we can see here, we've got many different styles like I mentioned, but we've got here, for example, regular 400. We've also got down here, bold 700. So if you are using CSS on your web page to make one of your, uh, you know, one of your elements or some of your text bold, you're going to want to make sure that you pick the bold font style right here. And we're going to see why right now. Let's say I want to include a bold font as well as a regular version of my font. So I'll just say select this style right here. Once you have chosen uh, your desired styles, and um, we can see up here it lists them out for you. Now, to include them on your web page, you're going to want to scroll down right here where it says use on the web and you want to just copy and paste this, uh, uh, these two link tags for the HTML. So I'll just copy this right here and then paste them uh, inside the head of my HTML file. So I can paste them right inside here. And now that is pretty much all there is to it uh, when it comes to including these fonts on your web pages. So in order to use these fonts now, if we go back to the example, we can see uh, it tells us uh, the best way to use our font. So we can see here it says uh, CSS rules to specify families. You want to say font family source sans pro and then fall back to sans serif right there. So I can just copy this right here or you can just type it out. I'll just copy this and then head inside my CSS. I'm going to target the body of the page and then I'm going to say font family source sans pro and then fall back to sans serif. So now if I go inside the browser, we can see that the font has been applied to my page right there. Now, as we can see, we've got this bold header and then this regular uh, font weight for the, um, for the paragraph. Now, by default, when the browser loads up the page, if it finds a H1 or any header, it's going to default that font weight to be bold. So, with that being said, this header is using the bold version of the font which we specified. What happens if I didn't select the bold weight right here? Well, we're going to test it out. I'll just uh, reduce the size of my browser right here and then inside this link, if I just make this smaller now, so we can see both ways, keep an eye on the heading right up here. So if I was to go inside here 
and I remove the 700 from the link right here, it's going to basically make it as if I didn't choose that font weight. So if I get rid of 700 right here and then save the page, watch closely on the page title. I'm going to save this and we can see it changes style. As we can see, it's actually a lot thinner than it was previously. Now, why is this happening? Well, Google Chrome has seen that we want a bold font for this header, right? But we didn't actually provide it with that font weight with Google. So it is trying to predict what it might look like. Google Chrome is basically, it is applying its own like artificial font weight to try and make it bold um, in the best way that it can. And different browsers are going to have different methods of doing this. So for example, this right here is going to look different in Safari compared to Firefox compared to Chrome, for example. So that of course is a problem because you want your web page to look the same across all your devices. So to fix that, you need to simply make sure you include each of the font weights and even italics. The same thing works for italics. You want to include the italic or the bold or the 600, whatever font weight you want, you want to make sure you include those in your web page if you are using them. If you're not using them, then don't choose it because then you're going to increase your network bandwidth and your load times uh, for no reason. So that is the basics of how to use your Google fonts. And there we go. That is how to use Google fonts to include custom fonts on your web pages. If you liked today's video, consider subscribing as I've got plenty of videos on my channel that cover web development. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.